Hello there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right and a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. What's well, good, Alaska? This is Scott Levesque, and you're listening to the Daily Dose of the Must Read Alaska podcast. It's been a while, guys, but I want to say welcome. Thank you for joining with me. I hope everybody had a great Christmas. Uh, I certainly did. I got a little R&R with the family. Love hanging out with my kids and my wife. So for me, it was awesome. And I hope you had a very good Christmas as well. Well, of course, we're heading into the new year in 2022. But before we do that, just remember, we have just asked and pleaded with you. Our goal for 2021 by the end of the year was to get to 150 reviews on the Apple Podcast app. And as of right now, as of Tuesday, we are sitting at 145, which means we need five wonderful people to step out and give us a five-star review to hit 150. If you haven't had a chance to do that, please be a part of that five. And you know what? It doesn't have to be five. It could be more. It could be 10, 20, 30. But we want to try to get to 150 before the start of the new year. Guys, thanks so much for joining with me. It is a cloudy day, which means it warmed up here in Anchorage. But we have a lot warming up politically as well. And we want to do a little something different this week. Of course, there is news coming all the time. And so we're going to try to hit on some of the high points in the news that are coming out this week. And we've got a couple that we want to hit on. But we also want to give you the top 10 articles of 2021. And the criteria is very simple. It's based on page views. So how many page views a story got will determine where in the ranking system that we have this. Now we're going to do the top 10 this week. And today we're going to hit on number 10 and number 9. But before we do that, let's talk about some of the news that's coming out of Alaska. And one of the biggest things is that Lieutenant Governor Kevin Meyer today announced he will not run in 2022 alongside uh, Governor Dunleavy. Now, uh, many of you might be wondering, well, what's the deal with that? Why would he announce that he's not going to run? Well, in his remarks, he said he wants to devote his entire focus on the 2022 election to ensure it's fair. Now, this comes at the tail end of a press conference where the governor and the lieutenant governor introduced some legislation they'd like to see passed in terms of election integrity and reform. Now, we will have a whole discussion on that later this week with Suzanne on on the podcast, and she's going to come on, I think, Friday, and we'll touch on it throughout the week. But what I want to focus on is the fact that lieutenant governor is going to run again in 2022. And the reason for this is, as he said, to ensure that there's for lack of a better term, fair elections and election integrity, and more specifically, specifically voter integrity. Now, why would he need to do that? This is a guy who served 30 years in elected service. He's had and been a part of 19 elections. But let's break this down. And really, it boils down to ballot measure two. Back in 2022, on the Uh, In that election cycle, ballot measure two was put for voters to vote on. And what happened? Well, very simply, it got passed. And it got passed because those pushing ballot measure two used a very simple, uh, ironic message about ballot measure two, which was dark money. They played on people's fears of outside influence being a part of elections, and they wanted to get rid of, quote, dark money. Now, there's a lot of irony in that statement. Number one, the ballot measure doesn't actually address dark money filtering in for additional ballot measures. Number two is the ballot measure, too, was mostly funded 80 plus percent by outside dark money. Again, the irony in that. But what really was the the salt on the wound, if you will, is the fact that most of the ballot measure dealt with a radical reform of our election system here in Alaska. And those two byproducts are the jungle primary and ranked choice voting. So now you have an entirely new type of election system here in Alaska that I believe the lieutenant governor knows is going to be a hot mess. People are going to be frustrated, upset, because here's the deal. The jungle primary in a ranked choice voting system is an extremely difficult system to actually communicate to voters. So I would assume that the lieutenant governor 
sees on the horizon a massive backlash to this entirely new system of voting here in Alaska. This new election system is going to create a cascade and a tsunami of irritated, very frustrated and angry Alaska voters. Now in 2020, you remember this very clearly, that there was a lot of talk surrounding uh, election integrity, not just on the national level, but here in Alaska. Uh, you're seeing this now played out in Juneau with their choice to go to mail-in voting. You're seeing it here in Anchorage with the uh, fact that the Barbara Jones, who is the uh, municipal, um, wow, I'm blanking on this right now. Uh, anyways, Barbara Jones, who's handling uh, the Anchorage elections and the mail-in voting and what happened out at Ship Creek and the fact that uh, Must Read Alaska was, uh, was kind of really tailing that and was at the forefront of a lot of the issues that were being seen and a lot of things, regardless of intent, that made people question the validity and security and integrity of the voting system. Focusing on the lieutenant governor, I think the reason why, and, and frankly, it's, it's an important reason, with the new and radically transformed election and voting system here in Alaska, there's going to be tremendous scrutiny on the election. There's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of frustrated and angry people, and it's a difficult system to communicate. So I would assume that the lieutenant governor wants to pour all of his time in there. And he said so. He says, I quote, I think this is going to be an election unlike any other, Myers said. Now, you can find all of this under the uh, title, Lieutenant Governor Kevin Meyer will not run again in 22. This was an article Suzanne Downing wrote. And he finishes it off like this. That is an extremely important as far as voter trust and confidence in our election process based on the fact that he wants to stay impartial and not have any bias or conflict. Great, wonderful. He sees the writing on the wall. However, again, the fact that this was done, this, this ballot measure too, which transforms, by the way, there is nowhere in the country where a jungle primary and rank choice voting are paired together in a ballot measure. This was a radically new, Alaska is a Petri dish for this type of election system and voting process. So don't think we're special. This is a an assault, I believe, on, on our democracy and how we do elections. No, nowhere else have these two things been combined. And not only that, you are creating so much confusion in this election cycle on how people need to vote that it, it's very evident. And where these have strongholds, where this, this system of ranked choice voting has strongholds, have been in predominantly Democratic-run areas. So for me, this is a this was done in specific measure not to help everybody, like it was said, keep dark money out or to give everybody a fair chance, every candidate a fair chance. What it was does is to tilt the scales towards the Democrats and the left leaning candidates, because this is where you see this type of voting system, this type of election system. And unfortunately, I think this is going to run ruckus all over. Alaskans. It's going to create confusion and frustration by far. And you're going to see a huge backlash. And frankly, if the courts don't settle this because of the lawsuits in, in place right now, I would hope the voters do by trying to reverse what has been done with this ballot measure. This was a complete sham. In my opinion, one vote for one candidate. Don't do this simulated system where you have to have specific tiers until, hey, uh, a, a computer dictates who gets to uh, who gets to be elected. No, that's not how it should work. One person, one vote for a candidate. Bottom line. But here we are. Well, that was the big news today. And like I said, we will talk a little bit more about this uh, election integrity bill that the governor and lieutenant governor introduced uh, a little bit later when I can have Suzanne on because I think she'll bring some great clarity and some uh, better understanding in terms of history to this. But I do want to go into the top 10 stories that were on mustreadalaska.com. And again, the, the criteria is the number of page views. And we're going to do number 10 and number 9 today. And number 10 is an interesting one. It was back in January, uh, I believe January 3rd. So as President Biden was coming in, uh, it's under the title, New House Rules for Feds, No Reference to Gender Allowed. 
And the article was simply stating the fact that now in the House, there was legislation being put forward to have gender neutral language in everything. Let me read you a little bit about this and hopefully it'll refresh your memory. The House will prohibit references to, quote, seamen for sailors or seafarers, abbreviate chairman to chair. The body will also prohibit references to federal code to family roles and genders such as father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, first cousin, nephew, niece, husband. It goes on and on. Democratic Senator Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Rules uh, Committee Chairman James McGovern announced new rules for the 117th Congress, which will be introduced and voted on during the regular session on Monday. So what you have here is a placating wokeism already taking place when Biden was elected and getting ready to step into his role as uh, commander in chief. And to do this, all of the far left leading wokeism was happening. And if you remember correctly, there was this whole uproar about when somebody said, amen. They didn't want to say amen anymore. They wanted to say amen and a woman. Now, the irony about this, and this was a prayer by Rep. Emanuel Cleaver, concluded the opening prayer for the 117th Congress to help attribute this with amen and a woman. However, this is so dumb because amen is actually a Greek and Hebrew word, which means truly or it is so. So the wokeism goes so far and so deep that common sense and actually looking up terminologies of words went right by people. And again, this is what we've seen through 2021, people. Okay, those who voted for Biden, remember, you voted not just for Biden, but for this left-leaning ideology that creates wokeism in a postmodern world that says, you know what? Facts don't matter. It's how I feel about those facts that matter. And this is what concluded was this ridiculous amen in a woman. Talk about the, the epitome of an actual ideology, not actually knowing what the word means, but actually redefining what the word means and attributed it to gender as opposed to what it truly says, which is ironically truly or it is so. And we're seeing this throughout 2021, right? This this wokeism, this idea that, um, you know, we, we have to placate to a far left that says we're going to redefine the entire landscape of what we believe you should believe. And this started January 3rd. This article was written January 3rd. And it has not gotten any better. As a matter of fact, the rules will penalize this particular rules that would need to be voted on. Members, House members and employees of the House for passing along social media, anything that the leadership deems to be fake news. And right there should, should concern you because that's the language that's being used in a lot of areas now. It's not about black and white. It's about feelings of leadership that deem it to be fake news, which includes things like the site, the Babylon Bee, which is essentially a satire site. It's like the onion for the, the right. But this is what we have now. This is what we've turned into. This is a, is, a, is a group of people who are far left, who believe everything's woke, are now dictating language in life. And again, uh, guys like Jordan Peterson, who are at the forefront of this issue, we're, we're not fighting against the fact that people want to be called a certain thing, but we're fighting against the fact of legislation of language. We've seen that recently with the fact that on Must Read Alaska, uh, we printed our I shouldn't say even print it, look at me, legacy media there, that we uh, wrote an article and Suzanne wrote this article about the fact that somebody was trying to rewrite, there was a college professor trying to rewrite the First Amendment. And no, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's an actual thing that was, was put out there. There was a rewrite of the First Amendment. Now you're probably asking me, Scott, come on. The, the First Amendment is not gonna be rewritten. Don't, don't worry about that. Why do you even worry about that? Well, I'll tell you why I worry about that. Because it's not just the rewriting of the First Amendment and this ideology that's out there. It's the fact that this is being placed onto your kids as they enter into higher ed. The indoctrination to these ideas are being uh, exemplified in higher education. And those kids, if not strong-willed and, and have a real clear idea of what they want, and what they believe in will succumb to this. 
because they're indoctrinated around them. There, there is there is a majority in those bastions of society that believe this way, right? So this law professor, this was a new uh, Fox News article, rewrites the First Amendment. And so the First Amendment says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Here's the rewrite of the Second Amendment. All people have a right to bodily autonomy consistent with the right of other people to the same, including the right to defend themselves against unlawful force and the right of self-determination in reproductive matters, which I don't have any idea why that's in the Second Amendment per se. Goes on, the government shall take reasonable measures to protect the health and safety of the public as a whole. Essentially what it does is it brings so much ambiguity and so much of the fact that you take, let's see, three lines, one sentence, and turn it into multiple sentences with more ambiguity and more uh, determination of government as opposed to, to the, the people. This is the kind of crap that I'm talking about. And so wokeism is not dead. This is an article that was written December 19th. It's still here. It's still alive. It's still well. And it's, again, these bastions of society like higher education institutions that are teaching your kids these things and having them look through the lens of this type of, of viewpoint. So that was article number 10. That was the top 10. And that had about around 13,000, almost 14,000 page views. This next article which again continues on the trend of wokeism and canceling and all that, had just over 14,500 page views. And it's under the title, Wasilla Woman Fired for a Job from Having a Jab and Parlor Social Media Account. And this was also a January article. And it was this woman in Wasilla who's a lit literary agent who was fired because she had a jab and she had a parlor account. Now... This again goes to the same type of frustration, right? There was no indication that she was fired for saying something offensive. She was no indication that she was fired because she said something uh, against company policy. No, she was simply fired. And from what we know, because of her, her presence on those two platforms, it's simply amazing. Now, if you look at it, Parler was sort of at the time... It was defunct at the time because what ended up happening was companies like Amazon and Google who own uh, servers and platforms for these type of things to operate in pulled from, from Parler. So Parler at the time was defunct and Jab had its own so they didn't have to even worry about it. But here's the deal. They're owned by Christians and they were also counter to a lot of left-leaning big tech companies like Twitter, like Facebook, like, Am like Amazon or Google. And so what do you have? Well, you had this backlash. If you remember correctly, in the beginning of 2021, there was this massive backlash to social media. It was the social media's fault for all this misinformation. It was fake news or it was disinformation or whatever terminology that was coming out at the time because we it's the same thing. It's just called different based on who's, quote, in charge. But you had all this backlash to social media and, and a lot of it focused on Trump losing the election. And then there was this like this hard push to really squeeze out anything that was countered to the, the left. And in the crosshairs were Parler and Gap because they weren't going to police uh, free speech like these other big platforms like Facebook, like Twitter. They weren't going to come out and say, hey, we're going to ban the president. Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. They said, no, our platform is to you know, hold free speech and we're not going to uh, shut out free speech and going to police everything. Well, because of that, particularly Parler, uh, at one point was defunct. They didn't have anywhere to host their platform. But again, it goes to the larger issue, which is this. Wokeism and the fact that you can't have competing ideas in the marketplace of ideas anymore. It's either you believe what we believe or you're out. And as we kicked off 2021 in January, article number 10, new house rules for feds, no reference to gender allowed. Article number nine, Wasilla woman fired for job 
for having Jab and Parler social media accounts was the beginning trend of what we saw as we moved through 2021 was this whole woke movement, this idea that we're going to cater to a, a, a small minority of people. Listen, I, I don't care necessarily about what you want to be called. Like, that's okay. Like, that's not my problem. That's not my... What I care about is what Jordan Peterson was talking about, which is this idea of legislating speech. We've got a First Amendment for a reason. And here's the thing. And it's been said over and over again. So this is not my original idea. The idea is this, that in the free marketplace of ideas, the best way to crush the the worst ideas and to promote the best ideas is to have the conversation and to let the worst ideas be shared so we can identify those as bad ideas. But that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. We just want what the certain group wants to be spread and have as the forefront of ideas to go on and everything else squashed. And that's not freedom of speech. That's, that's totalitarianism. That's, that's fascism. And that's not what America's about. And so we started off with the top 10, with number 10 and number nine, kicking off the new year with this idea of this wokeism, this, this idea of if you're not a part of this tribe, you're out and that means you're silenced. We kicked off 2021 like that. And listen, the last two years, believe me, have been long. They've been arduous. But as we go through this top 10 list, you're going to start to see a a kind of common thread through it all. So those were the top. That's number 10 and number nine for the top 10 articles of 2021. And listen, there seems to be no slowing down in this arena. So I am sure there is going to be more articles in 2022 that focus around this common thread. But the idea is this. The the experiment of America has been successful because it has the principles and the foundation of unlike any other civilization and society out there. Is it perfect? No. But it certainly has served a lot of people well. And not only that, amongst everything else, It has provided the freedom of the marketplace of not just business and economics and society, but of ideas. And if you start to quell and shut those down, I I am hard pressed to see us thriving as a nation moving forward. So those were the top, the number 10 and number nine articles of 2021. Well, it's a short podcast for me today. We're going to have a lot more this week. We're going to dive into this election integrity bill and we're going to continue to move forward because here's the thing. I think America is 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 got to look forward into maintaining its principles and ideals it was founded on. There's no need to write, rewrite the Second Amendment. There's no need to be woke and to try to 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 channel speech and try to um, to legislate speech. Listen, Stupid ideas, dumb ideas need to be brought to the marketplace so we can squelch them because the alternative is they hide in the dark and they become and swell bigger and bigger. And listen, I don't want that to happen. I want people to have debate and have discussion and to talk about those ideas and to really hold to the fire those ideas. And if the best ideas rise to the top, which they normally do, then listen, there's no need to worry. The best ideas always went out. But they went out when they're uh, available to go against ideas that are crappy and awful and against what the values of America are. And, and I would tend to think that a lot of people want to come to this country. Why? Well, because the values of America, what America stands for is appealing, which is why people want to come to America. I'm proud of the country I live in. I'm proud that my dad fought for this country. And I'm proud that I have friends and family that continue to fight for this country and have fought for this country. I think it's worth fighting for and it's worth fighting for internally and abroad. I think as as politics ramp up, we should fight for those ideals and the foundation that we've built on. And though it hasn't been perfect, trust me, I'm not saying America's perfect, but I am saying that the ideal of America is is worth fighting for. It is. All right. Well, that's it for me today. Appreciate you guys. Hey, listen, if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and go to Facebook. Like us there. We're trying to get to 25,000 before the end of the year as well. 
Go subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube. But also you can find us on Parlor, MeWe, Rumble, um, Twitter, all under the same handle, must read Alaska one word. All right, guys, that's it for me for a Tuesday. Until tomorrow, take care, Alaska. <laughs>